Hey, Paleo FX Tribe, it's Melissa here. And if you're anything like me and you like to enjoy a glass of wine every once in a while, um, but you don't necessarily enjoy those negative side effects, then you are not alone. And today with me, I have the awesome Todd from Dry Farm Wines, and they have created a solution to this problem of those negative side effects. And um, so we're here to talk about that. And also, first of all, Todd, thanks for being with us. And um, they were our sponsor um, at Paleo Effects 2019, and we're super grateful for that. They threw some kick-ass after parties, and we were super grateful for that. And we had so much fun. And so, of course, we just love you guys and love you that you're a part of our event and, um, and a partnership. And so, thank you. Yeah, Thanks great time. So this was our, I want to say, third or fourth year at Paleo FX. And basically, ever mm -hmm. since we began the business, um, we have been at Paleo FX. And every year it just gets bigger and bigger. This year we brought 25 people with us. And uh, <laughs> we just keep elevating and turning the volume up on uh, yes. our commitment to having fun with everybody there. So it was an amazing year. And we're looking forward to coming back in 2020, and uh, which is going to be a big year for us in general. So looking super forward to that. But let's talk about what's wrong with wine for a moment, with conventional yes. wines, with wines that you're drinking. So yes. sugar is a big problem. And if you're paleo or like me, keto, and have a serious commitment to, to fasting and intermittent fasting, I try to avoid sugar in everything, whether it be condiments, salad dressings, any sugar finds its way into everything, including wine. So we'll talk about how that happens in a moment. But the big, big thing that's happening in wine that so many people don't know about, because the wine industry has been super successful in keeping this dirty secret. And that secret is that there are 76 additives approved by the FDA for the use in winemaking. And those 76 additives, some of them are some pretty nasty characters. Some of them are okay. They're kind of natural. But most, but there's some pretty nasty characters in there. And so the reason that the public has been excluded from this knowledge is because the wine industry has spent tens of millions of dollars in lobby money to keep contents labeling off of wine. So wine is the only major food product without without an ingredients label. So you don't really know what's in it. And the reason you don't, you don't. know what's in it, they don't want you to know, right? And so yeah. that's kind of one of the big things that are going on, on, on in wine. So the other thing that's happened in wine is the same thing that's happened in our food supply. So we've had massive corporate consolidation around greed and money, right? So the top three largest wine manufacturers in the United States make 52% of all the wine. You don't know that. Mm -hmm. Same thing the food companies have done in hiding, hiding behind. You, they hide. They don't want you to know these multi-billion dollar manufacturing conglomerates are making most of the wine. The top 30 companies in the United States make over 70% of all wines. And so they want you to believe that you're drinking from a quaint farmhouse or a chateau, right? That's all the marketing right. story when, in fact, you're yeah. drinking wine from massive factories located in Central California. These are just – all of this is easily verifiable on Google, so it's not – you know, they've just been very successful in keeping all this a secret until I came along. So, you know, to <laughs> tell a few people, a few million people now the truth about this. And so that's that, which is a, a part of the fun part of my job is getting people educated. Right. And sure. then uh, and then sugar. Let's talk about sugar for a second. I'll tell you how sugar gets in uh, wine. It's not, it's not added. Sugar is not added yeah. to wine. <clears throat> Sugar gets in wine during the fermentation process. The commercial, the conventional winemaker will use sulfur dioxide to kill the yeast active in the fermentation before it completes fermentation. So how you ferment, how you make wine is the grape juice, which is filled with sugar, uh, comes in contact with yeast and the yeast begins to eat the sugar. The result of that is carbon dioxide and ethyl, and ethyl alcohol, the alcohol that's found in wine. 
And so as the yeast eats the sugar, then this is what happens. If the yeast is allowed to eat all of the available sugar, the yeast will die and the wine will be fully fermented and sugar free. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is sulfur dioxide is being added to the juice to kill the yeast prior to a full fermentation taking place, leaving what's known as residual sugar behind, or RS as it's called in the wine industry. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why you leave sugar behind. Americans love sugar, as you know. Right, that was gonna be my question. Why, why would they do that? Why, well, why it's a winemaking they... style. Here, so okay. Americans love sugar. Sugar sure. also, and glycerol, is a high sugar byproduct, sugar adds weight and density and boldness to wine. It just makes it thicker, right? And so, you know, when okay. you get these long finishes from wine, mm -hmm. right? In a natural wine, a sugar-free wine, you won't get that. And Americans love these long, rich finishes. The other reason is... Not for people who eat like we do, but for the average American, mm -hmm. their palate has been so desensitized by processed foods and particularly sugar that they just can't taste things unless they're rich and bold, right? And so uh, they're yeah. really attracted to these type of wines that are dense and rich and big, right? So everything in America is big, right? So, <laughs> so yeah. but when you eat the way we eat, right? And then your palate, rem your your palate is much more sensitive, and mm -hmm. you are you taste things in a more vivid way, and you actually want to eat clean food, right? Because you can taste it, right? And th and that's the way drinking natural wines or the kind of wines that we sell, and the kind of wines that we drink, you know that that's the way they taste. They're they're clean and fresh and light and crisp, mm -hmm. right? And that's what mm -hmm. real wine tastes like before it's altered. That's, that's in fact, this, this is what real honest wine tastes like. Yeah, that's, I love that. Um, you know, it's, uh, my husband and I love to make our dinner and have a glass of wine, you know, while we're making dinner, but we had to stop doing that basically just because it, the way it, you know, it took over our entire next day, it just made us feel boozy. And, and, but we, but we love wine. We love to have it with while we cook, while we, you know, with dinner. And so then we basically just stopped drinking wine altogether until, until we discovered dry farm wines. Yeah. So um, we just, we love that. And, but it's just so, God, I don't know, for lack of a word or better word, just such a bummer to, to take, something away that just could be it's, it's such a it's just a community driven type of a, of a thing that you get with you bringing in the wine with the dinner and the and you know and and that just gets that just gets ruined with with the conventional wine so the wines that you Listen, might find at your store wine elevates the dining experience wine also mm -hmm. the other thing that wine does because you know, particularly lower alcohol wines like we drink and that we promote, mm -hmm. which are lower alcohol. Alcohol is a very dangerous neurotoxin. People are surprised to hear the wine guy who's supposed to be selling wine say that alcohol is a very dangerous drug. Alcohol is a very destructive and dangerous drug, which is the reason we drink lower alcohol wines. As low as 6%, nothing over 12.5%. Conventional wines are 14, 15, 16%. And so most of the wine I drink is between 10 and 11%. And so, because I, want, I don't want to have a glass of wine, I want to have several. And I want to keep my alcohol intake at a, reasonable, at a reasonable level. And so this, how we think about alcohol is very important, but low alcohol, natural wines, you know, are very magical. And this really elevates the dining experience and also opens... Mm -hmm. It, it, it just it just causes us to be a little bit more emotionally available, right? And we just all yeah. want to see and be seen in the world. We just want to love and be loved, and wine helps with this love business. And, <laughs> and I like the love business, Yeah. right? And I also yeah. like being seen and being able to see others and be available and open. And wine helps with that. And so yeah. this love business is fueled up by some good, honest, real, natural wines. 
Yeah, I love that. I love it. You are in the love business completely. You bring people together. You make people love each other even more. That's fantastic. That's got to feel good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty awesome way to make a living. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're in the I love business. Imagine. We pour love from a bottle. <laughs> totally. You do. And so it's just, you know, it's great. Like we could drink, we, we feel like we could drink wine again. You know, it's just that it's just, we love it. So um, nice. it's a good thing. So, um, you talked about the ingredients before, like all the additives that are in it. Uh, when, so are those additives a part of the growing process with the grape? Are they added after the fact? Is it all of the above? Um, and there's, so that, and so there's the difference between dry farm wines and our, you know, the wines that you get down the street at the store or whatever are, so there aren't any additives added. To... Right, so so the additives come in. There, there's a couple of different places where where ad chemicals get into wine, including glyphosate, mm -hmm. which is the active ingredient in Roundup. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's speculated that glyphosate is getting in wine from irrigation because the way glyphosate is applied in a vineyard, and Roundup is the number one used herbicide in American vineyards. Mm -hmm. The way it's applied in a vineyard is not the same way it's applied, say, to wheat. You know, there's a big problem with, with wheat. I don't eat wheat, but if you do, there's a big problem with organic wheat getting contaminated by glyphosate because neighboring farms are applying it from an airplane, right, from a crop duster. That's how it gets applied to wheat fields, and it's easy to overspray into organic neighboring um, wheat fields. But in the way it's applied in the vineyard, is not like that. It's very close to the ground. And so, uh, and it's it's applied. It's applies. It's not really an opportunity for overspray, but they're finding glyphosate is quite often, according to two recent studies in California, glyphosate's often quite often found in organic wines. And is wondering how it gets in there. Well, it's it's speculated it's coming in through the irrigation because more than 99.9% .9 of U.S. vineyards are also irrigated. Now, the name of our company, Dry Farm Wines, dry farming means no irrigation. We don't allow irrigation on any of our, uh, on our grapevines. And so oh, wow. there's a whole lot of problems okay. with, there's a whole lot of problems with irrigation. But, but so chemical farming, which is non-organic farming, which is most of the farming, um, mm -hmm. grape farming in the world, uh, including in the United States. But so you're getting you're getting chemical exposure through non-organic farming and then in the cellar is where the real damage is happening you're getting one or many of the 76 approved additives including the nastiest one is called valcarin which is a super toxic uh chemical uh that is used to treat the most common bacterial fault in wine called bretomyces and Valcorn is, is applied to millions of gallons of wine annually uh, in the United States and around the world. Uh, and if you drank the wine within 24 hours of application, it would kill you, right? And so it's highly toxic. If you look it up online, the Wikipedia page on it, it, it says hazard colon toxic, Right. And so <laughs> the FDA allows up to 200 parts per million of this trace chemical to be left in finished wines. That's so I mean, right. just all of these things, this is just one example. This is just one of the 76 additives that mm -hmm. that can be applied and used in wine. So this is a this is there the, the most common one, which is universally applied almost to all wines is sulfur dioxide. And sulfur mm -hmm. dioxide is a is both a sterilizer, it mummifies the wine, it kills everything in it so that it has this shelf dependency. It also kills all the gut-friendly bacteria. It kills everything in the wine, right? So it's a sterilizer and a preservative. It's used universally in almost 100% of wines, right? So this is also when you see sulfites on a bottle of wine, it says contain sulfites, Mm -hmm. All wines, whether they have sulfur dioxide in them or not, contain sulfites. Sulfites are naturally occurring during the fermentation process. Sulfites are also found in lots of other foods, including anything else that's fermented, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. sulfites are quite common. Sulfites are found in French fries or potato chips. 
Right. So sulfites are not <clears throat> quite the scare that 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 you would have that you would believe they are because it says contain sulfites on the bottle. It really is not the question is how much sulfur dioxide does it contain? Right. Mm -hmm. and so we actually measure wines. We do independent lab testing on every wine. We're lab testing for sugar. We're lab testing for alcohol. It's like, well, why would you lab test for alcohol? Can't you look on the bottle? Well, another collusion between mm -hmm. the U.S. government and the wine industry is the stated amount of alcohol in a wine bottle legally is not required to be accurate. And because wine companies pay tax based on the amount of alcohol that's in the bottle, so mm -hmm. if they round down, they pay less tax. So when you look on a bottle of wine and it says 15% alcohol, you don't know what the alcohol content in it. The higher it's stated, the more tax they're going to pay. So guess what? Usually they're rounding down, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. so anyway, th there's just all of this kind of you know collusion and, and, and interest between political bodies politicians mm -hmm. and the lobbyists who pay them and the wine industry and so that you know we are exposing that truth yeah sounds familiar i mean sounds familiar with everything that we consume right in america it's a hundred percent it's pervasive <laughs> across all of our food it's pervasive mm -hmm. across virtually anything you put in your body there's mm -hmm. a good chance it's dishonest right yeah absolutely. and so unless you live the, with the intention that we live with which is, I mean, I'm ketogenic and a faster, so I live a super extreme dietary um, intention. But if you just live with intention to try to eat clean, I mean, you have to you have to live and lean into the intention of getting that done, right? Because mm -hmm. everything yeah. around you, whether it's marked good or bad, everything around you is oftentimes just not honest, right? Right. Yeah. A lot of things say natural. They can even say right. organic. Right. And they're not right. Really, right. Um, so the, yeah. the other reason I think one of the reasons that we're endorsed by thousands of health leaders and doctors and every we do 117 health and performance conferences this year. When people meet us, I mean, they know where we live. We walk the walk. We talk. Right. So, I mean, we're legitimately health fanatics like I'm drinking the same wine. I'm suggesting that you drink. Right. And we put yeah. a lot of intention to how we live. And I think that's obviously when you meet our team, you know, that we all have a certain look. We look like the talk that we put out. We walk that walk. We're all healthy and, and we're all very conscious and intentional about how we eat and drink. Yeah, I love the team. I love you guys. <laughs> I am sure you hear that a lot. <laughs> but, and, and not only just do you all look glowing and healthy and, and loving, I mean, Everyone's so nice and kind, and and then I mean, you just you you make everybody feel good and welcome, and just part of the tribe and part of the community. It's just it's just awesome. I love it. Well, um, it helps that we meditate an hour every morning together. That's how we begin our day. That so, is awesome. Um, yeah, it's a great way to live. So we uh, it uh, I, it just makes such a huge difference. It's the we think it's the thing that keeps us sort of grounded and loving and peaceful is uh, mm -hmm. we spend the first hour of every day meditating together every day. So sure. um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's an amazing okay. thing. Well, you guys are awesome too. We had such a big time this year. Um, yeah. We just kind of pulled the stops out and we had a bunch of parties and uh, we love to pour wine. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. So, yes, you uh, do. Yeah. Can, so it was a good time. Yeah, no, we're time. looking forward to, uh, we're really looking forward to PFX 20, you know, bigger and better, which, you know, every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And last year was our biggest year. So it's like, oh my gosh, we're, we're, we're already planning. Like, what can we do to make it even bigger? And so, um, so that's been fun. I'm thinking about that and, and, you know, challenging at the same time. It's like, how do we talk next year? <laughs> so well, we're going to uh, lean further in and we're going to make it our part bigger and better yeah. and then bigger again. Yes, so. for sure. I think that's definitely what I remember. That's what we talked about. So we're looking forward to that for sure. Um, nice. You know, one thing that I saw on your website, it might just be one of my favorite quotes is um, uh, enjoy the night without sacrificing the morning. 
which I just, I love that. It's, it's, and, and I can attest that it is absolutely true with dry farm wine. You can absolutely do that. Especially, I, I mean, and, and I say I can attest because I was going to all the after parties while I was working the event. Of course, you know, we're there early morning. We're there, you know, late. We're running, 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 running. And then we go to the after parties and it's bottomless pour. <laughs> Just like, exactly. and, and the next day I felt fine and there was no hangover and there was no headache and there's there's that, that that boozy feeling and I just I didn't look all ragged and and I had to be on camera a lot so that was really important to me so y'all I can attest this is legit like there's 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 no lie here <laughs> so uh, yeah no it's uh me, so. it's the real it's the real thing so uh, it actually works it it's really not fun. just marketing spend I mean it works oh. and so yeah. uh I drink one to two bottles a day. So uh, yeah. anyway, for you sure know, it uh, works. And we get up at this meditation, right? We're super committed to this meditation practice. Well, I mean, nobody wants to meditate hungover, you know. Oh, or, God, so, no. um, yeah, yeah, so anyway, that's the real deal. It actually works. Enjoy the night. Make the most of it. Don't sacrifice your morning. No reason that's for right. it. That's right. You know, and that's why we stopped drinking wine originally. But now it's like we don't have to do that anymore. So it's fantastic. So Nice. Thank you. Thank you for doing that for us, for everybody Perfect. in the world, right? Um, so what's uh, coming up for you guys for the rest of 2019? Oh, wow. Just uh, more of the same. We have, you know, we do like, uh, I don't know, more than 10 events a month. So oh, awesome. I go to Salt Lake City this weekend and Austin, Texas again to speak at mm -hmm. uh, an event down there the following week. Then out to New York City to speak at another event, um, mm -hmm. all health and wellness uh, conferences mm -hmm. or gatherings. And so pretty much uh, week to week, we are somewhere uh, pouring yeah. healthy wines for a bunch of healthy people who care about these things and, yeah, uh, and educating them and speaking about it and helping get people educated about the truth. I mean, I just want people to know if, if you choose mm -hmm. to drink that poison, you know, so be it. But you should know and they're certainly and not telling you yeah, yeah 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 so i uh, just wish i could i just wish i could get you out in more public places places you know it's like could we get a stamp of approval on this is this dry farm wine approved <laughs> so, yeah we the only way to get our wines is directly from us you know we don't sell to retailers or restaurants and it's just not the business right. we want to be in and we have uh you know, a hundred thousand local, a hundred thousand dedicated fans. And so, um, mm -hmm. it's just, and that's okay. just the perfect yes. place we want to be. And, and, um, and that allows you, that allows you the control to be able to control the quality of what does. we're all drinking. It does. Yeah, so that, that's okay. Um, so well, great. Um, so are there any deals that you have going on right now? I know yeah, so we have a penny out. bottle for Paleo mm -hmm. FX listeners. So just go to dryfarmwines.com forward slash Paleo FX. Dryfarmwines.com forward slash Paleo FX. And you get a penny bottle of wine. Awesome. Yes. And I will also post that in the comments for those of you that need to hear that again. And um Again, Todd, just can't thank you enough. So excited for the upcoming year. And hopefully I'll get to see you somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'm event. sure we'll see each other somewhere. Thanks, Thanks for having me on that. today. And, and yes, uh, I wish you. everybody a light and love-filled heart. And um, just make it a beautiful day and lean in and live with intention. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you later.